Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having uh, a great day. Look, uh, this ain't gonna be long. Uh, you know, you know the routine. We're in the middle of a fundraiser. You believe in the work we're doing in the community? Uh, work we've been doing for more than 30 years. Work that we have been pressed in for the last 20 years. Uh, support us. Look in the description box. Click the link and give uh there's so much we're doing you can follow i mean it's so much stuff out there it ain't hard to figure out what we're doing uh just google we, we're there uh but we need your support if you follow me for any stretch of time you know what i'm talking about so show some love look this ain't gonna be long at all uh i'm not even sure if they've done it yet uh but I'm pretty sure they're waiting to the last minute, so it's not a whole lot of time in the day before they do it. Uh, last time I checked, they hadn't, but it could definitely have happened, and I'm talking about Memphis Police Department releasing the body cam footage of the beating of Tyree Nichols uh, that ultimately uh, resulted in his death uh, by, if I'm not mistaken, five black police officers and uh, a couple of things uh, obviously they're out and they're uh, sending out word and trying to get everybody to uh, speak up anybody with a platform and a voice and any influence in the community to speak up and ask people not to riot uh, you guys know where I am with the whole uh, riot uh, protest thing uh, a protest without power is just a collective temper tantrum. If you don't have something you can do other than throw a hissy fit and tear up something, especially if it's not something they care about, it's just like the people burning jerseys or stuff that they've already paid for because they upset with somebody They're burning shoes and all this that they've already paid for. It's absolutely nothing to the people you're trying to make a point to. Uh, you have to have, a protest has to be the precursor to possibilities of consequences that a certain group of people don't want. In this instance, the government, police department, city and municipalities, etc. When you don't have anything that you can do to them, threaten not to vote for them, and that says you don't really understand the whole political process when you, when you do that because it doesn't matter. But, you know, there's got to be something that you're saying, if we don't see X, Y, Z, this is what we're going to do. Well, one thing that we've got to do is stop post-trauma protesting. Wait until somebody's dead, gravely wounded, before we rise up. This police department, along with so many across the country, didn't just all of a sudden become predatory towards a specific group of people, uh, namely blacks specifically black males this is common and please don't let the fact that all five of these police officers were black get you confused blue trumps black when it comes down to police departments uh, I know a bunch of cops got cops in the family one of my closest friends is a former cop Dr. Michael Blanchard and had to leave the force because when you're truly about your people and you are going to hold your own in the ranks accountable, you don't last long. Your life gets threatened and so many of your job gets threatened. This blue wall of silence is real. This, this, this feeling. And then, uh, like Cube said, a lot of times you're at more of a risk with a black cop than you are with a white cop because you got black cops that are trying to prove that they are truly a part of this blue fraternity. Uh, I can go so much more into that, but that's not what I'm uh, here uh, 
I'm not telling nobody not to do anything. I'm just saying that there's no real benefit to doing it. What I'm saying is, this is where it's time for us to realize that they are not going to ever just sit up and say, you know what, we're, we're doing them wrong. You know what, that was horrible. You know what, what the first thing that comes to mind when I think about him, and I'm trying not to get angry, and I'm trying not to make this a long, drawn-out thing because I've gotten angry. So I'm trying to really, really remain composed, but I get really upset. Number one is, I'm not going to view the videos. I, I gave up trauma porn years ago. I don't watch shootings. Um, I don't watch any of the things where somebody is really getting harmed uh, because I don't want that in my spirit so with that being said with that being said what I'm going to uh, do is what I always do I'm going to read um, I'm going to read and I'm going to uh, examine other people's assessments of it to develop a panoramic view of how it went down based off of a number of different uh, accounts from people who have actually seen it uh, without having to see it. That's just about as deep as I'm going to get into the negativity that comes with that. So, in essence, that part of it is that what I want to po focus on and talk about real briefly is this thing that um Something's going to change if we throw a hissy fit. Something's going to change if we see this video and it's not what it, uh, and, and it's what we all know it is because of how long they've held it. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's obvious. What got to me, what really, really got to me and angered me is when I found out that he wasn't shot, he was beaten to death by five black men who wear blue uniforms beaten to death do you know without some catastrophic blow or fall of the head blow what it takes to beat a person to death the type of force and, and anger and hostility it takes to this isn't pulling the trigger in haste this isn't five cops saying gun and then everybody starts shooting this is five black men beating on a young black brother until the results of that beating are enough to cause his death. Think about that. Think about it. Now, what I also want you to pay attention to is the narratives you don't see. You don't see them come into the defense of these black people. What they're going to do is they're going to readily serve them up. That's easy. That's 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 real simple. We're going to throw them right on out there. You don't you don't see the normal. Well, listen, you know, it, it, you know, we have to, you know, they know what happened, and the thing is, they beat him to death. Let that, let that marinate for a while. They beat him to death. They didn't shoot him. It wasn't something quick. They beat him to death. What we need to do is for once organize, create an agenda, come up with a strategy, have a plan, unite, build something so that we have something to stand on, create a power source instructor so that when we sit up and say this is unacceptable if you don't get this straight we're going to do xyz and be able to carry it out and follow through on it until we get to that point they're going to keep doing what they've been doing there's a reason they're doing it there's no repercussion outside of us begging someone else to give us justice And then I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done and I'm going to be as clear as I possibly can with this.
keep thinking that the world is built on morality and people do certain things based on a moral code or a moral compass or a moral standard. The world is governed by consequence. Let me be clear. If you don't like something somebody's doing, put a negative consequence that they're not willing to suffer to it. It's that simple. Thinking you can sit up and guilt somebody into treating you the way they're supposed to be, uh-uh, give it a negative consequence. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.